We have gathered together this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And my mouth will proclaim your praise. Come, let us worship Christ who for our sake suffered death and was buried. Come, let us worship Christ who for our sake suffered death and was buried. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship Christ, who for our sake suffered death and was buried. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him, the dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us worship Christ who for our sake suffered death and was buried. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Meribah and Massa, they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all my works. Come, let us worship Christ, who for our sake suffered death and was buried. For 40 years, I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray and they do not know my ways. So I saw in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship Christ, who for our sake suffered death and was buried. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, let us worship Christ, who for our sake suffered death and was buried. God, come to our assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The hymn. Through Christ the Lord of heaven on high, most glorious Savior of the world, who by the cross, your gracious gift have freed us from the loss of death. We beg you now with fervent prayer. Preserve, O oh Lord, the holy gifts you grant through sacred mysteries to every people, every land. As blameless, meek, and gentle lamb, the victim offered for the world. You washed in your redeeming blood the robes of all your blessed sins. And those you, you ransomed with the price of your most sacred flesh and blood, you bring to heaven as you rise, where they extol you evermore. Include us in their number, Lord. We humbly pray and call on you, who, for the Father, made of us for the money the kingdom drawn from every race amen psalm four it's a psalm of thanksgiving thanksgiving for the one who feels healed and we are having this psalm because jesus is healed in that tomb, in silence, and even when we ask for prayers for people and uh, 
and uh, and somebody passes on, we say, Father, the prayers have been answered. In our thinking, we may say they have not been answered because a person has gone, but uh, a person is resting. And so the Lord is resting. When he had told us yesterday, it is finished. And so it is a psalm of thanksgiving. St. Augustine says the resurrection of Christ was both supreme and holy marvelous work. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. When I call, answer me, O God my, of justice, from anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. O men, how long will your hearts be closed? Will you love what, what is futile and seek what is false? It is the Lord who grants favors to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Fear him. Do not sin. Ponder on your bed and be still. Make justice your sacrifice and trust in the Lord. What can happiness, what can bring us happiness? Many say, let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy than they have from abundance of corn and new wine. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. My body shall rest in hope. Psalm 16 is the realization of God as one's heritage, the portion. It says suffering is not my portion. No, suffering will be our portion, but God is our portion who makes us go through that suffering with fortitude because God is our real portion. And God is our heritage. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. My happiness lies in you alone. He has put into my heart a marvelous love for the faithful ones who dwell in his land. Those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Never will I offer their offerings of blood. Never will I take their name upon my lips. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. The Lord marked out for me is my delight. Welcome indeed the heritage that falls to me. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices. My soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved nor decay. You will show me the path of life the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand and happiness forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus, uphold those who hold you, who, who hope in you, and give us your counsel 
so that we may know the joy of your resurrection and deserve to be among the saints at your right hand. My body shall rest in hope. Lift high the ancient portals, the King of glory enters. Psalm 24, which is usually used as an invitatory psalm, in, as an alternative invitatory psalm, is the realization or the acknowledgement of the God who enters the temple. And indeed, he has entered that temple through his death. And we saw on, on, Holy, on, on Good Friday, usually, on, even on, on Holy Sunday, the, the, the Palm Sunday, when we are going through the Passion narrative, especially that of Matthew, the curtain being torn in two, the curtain of the of, of, of the temple being torn in two because he has entered, he has entered by his death through that. So we want to say the Lord enters into his temple by his death because he is a real high priest. St. Irenaeus says, Christ opened heaven for us in the humanity he assumed. The Lord, the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The men with clean hands and pure hearts, who desires not worthless things, who has not sown, so has to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. O oh, gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. O gates, lift high your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter the king of glory. Who is he, the king of glory? He, the Lord of armies, he is the king of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When your Son was unjustly condemned, Lord, God, and surrounded by the... Im when your Son was unjustly condemned, Lord God, and surrounded by the impious, he cried to you, and you set him free. Watch over your people as the treasure of your heart and guide their steps along safe paths that they may see your face. Lift high the ancient portals, the king of glory enters. Take up my cause and rescue me. Be true to your word, give me life. First reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. Let us strive to enter the Lord's rest. While the promise of entrance into his rest still holds, we ought to be fearful of disobeying lest any one of you be judged to have lost his chance of entering. We have indeed heard the good news, as they did, but the word, the word which they heard did not profit them, for they did not receive it in faith. It is we who have believed, who enter into the rest, just as 
God said. Then I saw in my anger, they shall never enter into my rest. Yet God's work was finished when he created the world. For in, the, for in reference to the seventh day scripture, somewhere says, and God rested from all his work on the seventh day. And again, in the place we have referred to, God says, they shall never enter into my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter, and those to whom it was first announced did not enter because of unbelief, God once more set a day today, when long afterwards he spoke through David the words we have quoted. Today, if you should hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, if Joshua had led them into the place of rest, God would not have spoken afterward of another day. Therefore, a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. And he who enters into God's rest, rests for from his own work as God did from his from his. Let us strive to enter into that rest so that no one may fall in, imita in imitation of the example of Israel's unbelief. Indeed, God's word is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates and divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Nothing is concealed from him. All lies bare and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The short responsory. They buried the Lord and sealed the tomb. They rolled a large stone in front of it. Station soldiers there to guard it. The chief priests asked Pilate for a guard. The station soldiers there to guard it. Our second reading is an ancient homily on Holy Saturday, the Lord descends into hell. Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parent as for a lost ship great desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. He has gone to free from sorrow the captives, Adam and Eve. He who is both God and the son of Eve. The Lord approached them bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he had created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord, be with you all. Christ answered him, and with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. Out of love for you and for your descendants, I now, by my own authority, command all who are held in bondage to come forth. 
all who are in darkness to be enlightened and all who are sleeping to arise. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I did not create you to be held a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, walk, work my hands. Work of my hands. You who were created in my image, rise, let us leave this place. For you are in me and I am in you. Together we form only one person and we cannot be separated. For your sake, I, your God, became your son. I, the Lord, took the form of a slave. I, whose home is above the heavens, descended to the earth and beneath the earth. For your sake, for the sake of man, I became like a man without help, free among the dead. For the sake of you, who left a garden. I was betrayed to the Jews in a garden and I was crucified in a garden. See, on my face the spittle I received in order to restore to you the life I once breathed into you. See, they're the marks of the blows I, I received in order to refashion your what? Nature in my image. On my back, see the mark, the marks of the scourging I endured to remove the burden of sin that weighs upon your back. See my hands nailed firmly to a tree. For you who once wickedly stretched out your hand to a tree, I slept on the cross. And a sword pierced my side for you who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side has healed the pain in yours. My sleep will rouse you from your sleep in hell. The sword that pierced me has sheathed the sword that was turned against you. Rise, let us leave this place. The enemy laid you out of the earthly paradise. I will not restore you to that paradise, but I will enthrone you in heaven. I forbade you the tree that was only a symbol of life. But see, I, who am life itself, am now one with you. I anointed cherubim to guard you as slaves are guarded, but now I make them worship you as God. The throne formed by cherubim awaits you, its bearers swift and eager. The bridal chamber is adorned, the banquet is ready, the eternal dwelling places are prepared. The treasure houses of all good things lie open. The kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you from all eternity. Our shepherd, the source of the water of life, has died. The sun was darkened when he passed away. But now man's captor is made captive. This is the day when our Savior broke through the gates of death. He has destroyed the barricades of hell, overthrown the sovereignty of the devil. This is the day when our Savior broke through the gates of death. We now turn to our morning prayer. The hymn
to Amen. you, to you, Redeemer of us all, we sing our hymn with tears and pray. Forgive us, Lord, for each offense. Forgive the sins that we confess. By death upon the cross, you crushed the forces of our ancient foe, and we, with bro, both signed and sealed, now rise the banner of our faith. Forever in your kindness, Lord, drive far from us our enemy, that he may never wound again all those you ransomed by your blood. You willed in mercy to descend and harrow hell on our behalf, that you might give the gift of life to all who owe a debt to death. Then at the time you have ordained, you shall dissolve the passing world. The judge who justly grants to each the recompense their lives deserve. O oh Christ, we beg you, heal our wounds, who with the Father ever blessed, and with the Spirit evermore, and worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Psalm 64 is a prayer for help against the enemies. This psalm commemorates most particularly our Lord's passion, says St. Augustine of Ypres. Though sinless, the Lord has been put to death. The world is in mourning as for an only son. Hear my voice, O God, as I complain. Guard my life from dread. For hide me from the band of the wicked, from the throng of those who do evil. They sharpen their tongues like swords. They aim bitter words like arrows. They shoot at the innocent from ambush, shooting suddenly and recklessly. They sharpen, they, they scheme their evil course. They conspire to lay secret snares. They say, who will see us? Who can search out our crimes? He will search who searches the mind and knows the depth of the heart. God has shot them with his arrow and dealt with certain wounds. Their own tongue has brought them to ruin and all who see them mock. Then will all men fear. They will tell what God has done. They will understand God's deeds. The just will rejoice in the Lord and fly to him for refuge. All the upright hearts will glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, you gave your son victory over the men who plotted evil against him. When he cried to you in his agony, you delivered him from fear of his enemies. May those who suffer with him in this life find refuge and success in him. Though sinless, the Lord has been put to death. The world is in mourning as for an only son. From the jaws of hell, Lord, rescue my soul. The canticle of Isaiah is an anguish of a dying man and joy in restoration. These are the words that seem to be coming from the mouth of, Zechariah, of, of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, who had pleaded with Isaiah that he be given a chance to live. And he was given 15 more years of life. 
and we see him rejoicing in the fact that God restores us to life. Mm -hmm. And he does. I was living, I was dead, and I hold the keys of death. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 to 18. Once I said, in the noon time of life, I must depart. To the gates of the nether world, I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. My dwelling like a shepherd's tent is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who savors the last thread. Day and night you give me over to torment. I cry out until the dawn. Like a lion, he breaks all my bones. Day and night you give me over to torment. Like a swallow, I utter shrill cries. I mourn like a dove. My eyes grow weak, gazing heavenward. O oh Lord, I'm in straits. Be my surety. You have preserved my life from the pit of destruction. When you cast behind your back, all my sins. For it is not the nether world that gives you thanks, nor death that praises you. Neither do those who go down into the pit await your kindness. The living, the living give you thanks, as I do today. Fathers declare to their sons, O oh God, your faithfulness. The Lord is our Savior. We shall sing to stringed instruments in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From the jaws of hell... Lord, rescue my soul. I was dead, but now I live forever, and I hold the keys of death and of hell. Psalm 150 is a psalm of thanksgiving. Whenever the Lord does something for you, take Psalm 150. It is a way of saying thank you, Lord, for rescuing me. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me back to life. Thank you, Lord, for restoration, for the restoration you have done. And it is a psalm of thanksgiving in today's silence as we await the resurrection of our Lord. He has already achieved his work on the cross, and now we await that resurrection in thanksgiving. Even when we go through heavy moments in life, we should, like this psalmist, say thank you, Lord, as he unfolds something of great value for us. Let mind and heart be in your song. This is to glorify God with all your heart, says Saint Esichus. Praise God in his holy place. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his powerful deeds. Praise his surpassing greatness. Oh, praise him with sound of trumpet. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Oh, praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with crash with clashing of symbols. Let everything that lives and that breathes give praise to the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and of all created things, you make your just ones holy and you justify sinners who confess your name. Hear us as we humbly pray to you. Give us eternal joy with your saints. I was dead, but now I live forever and I hold the keys of death and of hell. Our reading from Hosea chapter 5, verse 15b to 16 and 2. Thus says the Lord, in their affliction they shall look for me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. For, our, for our sake, Christ was obedient, accepting even death, death on a cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him the name above all other names. Save us, O Savior of the world. On the cross you redeemed us by the shedding of your blood. We cry out for your help, O God. The Canticle of Zechariah Luke chapter 1, verse 68 to 79, the Messiah and his forerunner. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophet, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he saw to our father, Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Save us, O Savior of the world. On the cross you redeemed us by the shedding of, the, of your blood. We cry out for your help, O God. Intercessions. Our Redeemer suffered and was buried for us in order to rise again. With sincere love, we adore him. And aware of our needs, we cry out, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, our Savior, your sorrowing mother stood by you at your death and burial. In our sorrows, may we share your suffering. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ our Lord, like the seed buried in the ground, you brought forth for us the harvest of grace. May we die to sin and live for God. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ the Good Shepherd, 
in death you lay hidden from the world. Teach us to love a life hidden with you in the Father. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, the new Adam, you entered the kingdom of death to release all the just since the beginning of the world. May all who lie dead in sin hear your voice and rise to life. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, Son of the living God, through baptism we buried with you. We were buried with you. Risen also in baptism, may we walk in newness of life. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us as we were await with expectant hearts your resurrection, saying, Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If us to stay our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Before the concluding prayer, I would like to share something regarding this day that we are having. Uh, for those of you who are following us on YouTube and on TikTok, it's very important to 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 take note of this. If there is any church that takes us back to feel like we are there, as if it is just happening, it's the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church relieves the moments of 2,000 years ago as they were happening. On a day like this, the disciples were locked up. On a day like this, there was silence. In the world of the Middle East, which was the only world, so to say, if we had to talk about the world in terms of faith, and they were locked up because... They didn't know what was going to happen to them. And we feel locked up. No activities are supposed to be held. Even at church, everything should be taken in a very quiet way, even as they prepare for, for the evening celebration, do the decorations. Wherever you are, do that in silence. Because we want to relieve the moments of 2,000 and more years ago. The moment that made the disciples to be silent. They had a lot of expectations and they saw that cross as the end of what they thought was going to last. But it was not the end. God was going to work out something. That's why today, if you look at me, all these days we have been having prayers. I've been putting on a vestment. But today is a colorless day. We don't have any color for the vestment. It's not green. It's not blue. It is not red. It is not a white. White starts this evening. Red was yesterday. White was on Thursday. Purple ended on Wednesday. And we, we shall only resume purple in November for Advent. So as a priest of all colors, I cannot put on a vestment now because there is no color I can wear except... Mm -hmm. So I'm not allowed to administer any sacrament that has nothing to do with restoration of life, with a new life. Today, I cannot 
at all. Even, or, I mean, if I'm a bishop, I cannot ordain a priest on a day like this. So ordination cannot be held on Holy Saturday. I cannot, as a priest, administer the sacrament of marriage on a day like this. I cannot, as a priest, uh, yes, do these sacraments that have nothing to do with the restoration of life. So the only thing I can do, yes, I can anoint the sick because it has to do with life and restoration of life. I can baptize because it is connected to the dying, to the person who is dying, who is in danger of death. I am able to baptize that person uh, because it's connected to life. I can administer the, 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 the distribution of the Eucharist to the sick. Not anyone who, who, who ask for Eucharist, but only to the sick at, on a day like this. I can do one more thing. I can administer the sacrament of confession because... Confession has to do with life. As long as it is connected as well to the sick. And we are all sick, definitely. And we need uh, that sacrament. So these I can do. But I cannot confirm somebody today. I cannot do confirmation. I can do baptism. I can do... Uh, the anointing of the sick, and I can do, give communion. I cannot have mass. There is no mass today. So there is no. there was no mass yesterday. There is no mass today. But we shall have mass in the evening. The mass we are having in the evening is not for Saturday. It is for Easter. It's called Easter Vigil. So it is actually Sunday mass. That begins on Saturday evening. And so we want to have as much time of silence as possible today where we reflect on the life that Christ gives us. And if we're in the habit of having music in the house, in the houses, wherever we are, let us... Reduce on that. And uh, uh, reduce too much anything that brings a lot of noise. You know, we are fond of too much noise in our world today. The world has become more noisy than it was before because with so many social media platforms, when you open a, a, media, a social media platform, you will find everything and anything that will keep you busy that will keep you from a reflection. And so, if only we can put away gadgets, take the Bible, have a moment to yourself. If you want to lie down, lie down. Better you lie down in sleep than... than Put on earphone and start listening to the music that distracts you from reflecting on the Lord who gives us life. If at all you want to listen to some music, listen to some of those cool songs that settles your heart down and makes you reflect. It can be instrumental music. It can be some religious music, but don't make that too loud. Keep it serene and cool so that the Lord who died for us may be our reflection, that we may reflect on that love shown on the cross. And I suppose that's exactly what the disciples did behind closed doors. They reflected on the life of the man who ended up on the cross. They spent time with their God. 
And so we should today. And uh, if I was in charge of the world, I would even switch off the music in all the bars, close up all the bars for at least five, six hours to make sure that there is enough silence in the world. I would even make the, the cars stop polluting the world as it was during COVID. Well, COVID helped the world to be polluted less because uh, there were no planes flying, uh, people were packed at home, and there was a lot of silence. Let's have that moment together. And you will see a lot of peace in your heart. We now have a concluding prayer. O powerful and ever living God, your only son went down among the dead and rose again in glory. In your goodness, raise up your faithful people buried with him in baptism to be one with him in the everlasting life of heaven where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>